Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank you for coming out this afternoon and um, joining us for what I'm sure is going to be a very exhilarating and interesting talk. It was reassuring to know that it was because I had been so productive that I could now admit so many missteps. If I had made only a few paintings each year, I would likely have found my worst paced paintings disproportionately precious, and which would have made learning and evolving almost impossible. So I had a terrible fallout with the director of the Contemporary Gallery, and he told me to leave. Um, his assistant tied the 30 or so paintings in two big bundles, and we brought them up the stairs and out to the sidewalk. On that disastrous cold gray March afternoon, I stood with my bundles by the curb, absorbing the awareness that the days of showing at my first handsome and highly visible gallery were over. We had a little over $900 in the bank, and we needed $350 each month to survive. Starving and being evicted wasn't the issue. I knew I could always find work and somehow support my family. And when would I find time for painting? I brought the paintings into my building's lobby and rang for the elevator. While glancing into the mailbox, there was something white and I reached for it, hoping it wasn't a bill. It was a letter from a private art deal in New Jersey containing a check for $350. Another month between me and the wolf. Upstairs, as I was putting away my paintings, the phone rang. This is absolutely how it happened. It was just amazing. The phone rang. The caller identified herself as a private art dealer who lived in the neighborhood. She was calling to say she had seen a large painting of mine at a friend's home the evening before and had liked it very much. She wanted to look at more of my canvases, adding that she was sure she could sell some of them. Our apartment was in its usual disarray, and we tied it up best we could before she arrived. At this low point of my life, the very lowest, I was grateful to see her seriously studying my paintings, the same ones that had just experienced such an ignominious return from the gallery. Although she was impressed by my work, I was sure that my luck had turned bad and nothing good would come of this. Choosing one of my favorite paintings to take with her, she asked how much I wanted for it. I replied without hesitation, $350. I never did have to look at the help wanted ads. The dealer's name was Muriel Werner, and she sold that painting and 40 more during that next 12 months. The lo lowest point of my life had lasted only a few hours. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I just, it was just amazing. Can you tell us, uh, or just speak about your process of creating your paintings? Like, when I start a painting, I usually have a, a coat of paint on the canvas of a neutral tone, and I let that dry. I uh, am drawing with a dark pigment, and I'm creating the objects, but I'm drawing the positive shapes. And then when that's done, and that's, that could take a day or two, depending how difficult it is. Sometimes it goes very smoothly, sometimes it's just really hard to get it the way I want it, and I wash it out and do it again, and wash it out and, and get it right. Um, I let it dry, because I don't want to work on wet paint. If you work on wet paint, you always have one layer of paint, number one. You always have one layer of paint, and so you can't avail yourself of any painterly effects of letting paint show through or blending or, uh, into a background that is stable. Um, maybe it's like asking somebody if they have a favorite child, but do you have a favorite mezzotint, one that you're proudest of? Usually the last one. <laughs> <laughs> when I paint the negative space, I'm recomposing the positive shapes. So the negative spaces all have a shape, uh, a, 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 a design that seems significant to me, that I find significant, an expression. It, it's expressive. And I, I'm only at that phase, not only, but primarily concerned with getting a design and a movement in the negative space. And when that dries, I recompose the positive shapes. Now I'm adding color. Now I'm, you know, uh, developing it in terms of texture, in terms of light and shadow, etc. 
always with the feeling that I'm really in space. And I go back and forth three or four times, three or four times, recomposing each, the positive and then the negative. Um, what happens as a result of this is that when the painting is finished, everything sort of just is so together. There's such a nice tension between the negative and the positive. I, I, I love your color palette, and I want to know, did you come about this very soft feeling by accident? Did you just like this particular part of the day, everything that is seems? I have gravitated towards a much simpler um, palette because, uh, well, it seems to get to something very, you know, I think that color sometimes can be very distracting. So my early work was very colorful, very uh, energetic, very much more aggressive. This is aggressive and strong and intense, but in a, a more muted way. And I have a very definite character and a very definite mood in my work, although it does evolve. We are so honored to have had the time to spend with you. Honored to be with you again, and thank you, Robert, for being with us. We